Hi, my name is Bruce Peterson, and you're listening to The Passive Investor Show. The views and opinions provided on this show are for informational purposes only and should not be misinterpreted as an offer to buy or sell any securities or to make or consider any investment or course of action. For more information, please go to PassiveInvestorShow.com. Are you a busy professional looking to diversify your portfolio? Ever wanted to passively invest in real estate but don't know where to start? John Fortes provides you with a guide to passively invest in real estate. This is the Passive Investor Show. And now, the Passive Investor Show. Here's your host, John Fortes. Welcome, PI listeners, to the Passive Investor Show. I'm John Fortes. Our goal and purpose of this show is to be a resource to passive investors and help them master their investments in real estate funds. Today's guest is Bruce Peterson. Bruce is also known as the apartment guy, and you're going to find out why. Bruce Peterson is a syndicator of large multifamily properties throughout Central Texas, ranging in sizes from 48 to 292 units. He was awarded the Austin Apartment Association's Independent Rental Owner of the Year in 2016 and the National Apartment Association's Independent Rental Owner of the Year in 2007, as well as Think Realty's Multifamily Investor of the Year in 2019. Bruce targets stabilized properties where he can buy a cash flowing asset and drive value through building community and improved operations. He is able to do this by implementing his proven systems and deploying his experienced staff to replicate his business model across the new acquisitions. He also just released his new book, Syndicating is a and Other Truths You Haven't Been Told. Please excuse us for cussing on this one. I hope you don't got little ears around. But Bruce, welcome to the show and tell us a little bit about you. Man, thanks so much for having me here. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm a syndicator. That's what I do. Um, I've been doing it since 2012. Started to get myself educated in 2011. And, you know, I had no background in this thing at all. I was a retail kid. You know, I worked in retail for 18 to 20 years until I realized this sucks. This is killing me. You know, I'm five foot eight. I was 240 pounds. I was fat. I was depressed. Literally, I was depressed because I hated my job so much. It's a great company, but I hated my job. So I quit at 43, you know, following a Dave Ramsey kind of mindset of live way below your means, save everything you can, invest it wisely. So at the age of 43, I could afford to walk away. And then I started looking around for the next thing. And I, I started searching for real estate, found a mentor here locally to help me through it. And dude, it's been the best thing I've ever done. Uh, most rewarding, both lucratively, emotionally everything about it, you know, you get to make a difference in people's lives as cheesy as that sounds and everybody talks about it, but it's the honest to God truth. You know, we get to make a difference instead of just stocking a shelf in a retail store or making sure your staff does, you know, it's more rewarding. Again, we started in 2012 buying our first uh, 48 unit property. We've bought six in total, uh, syndicated over 1100 units. We've sold three. We've done a 1031 exchange. We have our own management company, asset management company, construction company, very vertically integrated, and I'm a college dropout on top of all of that. So if I worked in retail and I dropped out of college, I'm no smarter than anybody listening to this thing, I swear to God. So anybody can do this. You know, I'm, I'm living proof. Man, I love that. And a few things that jumped out at me is, and I kind of want to talk about when you started working with your investors and raising capital and to go into these deals. So how did that look like on your first opportunity where you had to raise capital and work with passive investors to how it, how it differs from how you're raising capital now with your passive investors? What are the two differences? All right. So the first deal, I brought in 14 people with me. Uh, so it was uh, 15 of us total, about a 48 unit property had a cash raise of $575,000. That seems really low for people listening now that are trying to figure all this out. If you're trying to do your own deals, I paid thirty four thousand dollars a door. That doesn't happen anymore. But you know, I, I put together my own little meetup. Right, it was me and one other guy, 
And over about a six to nine month period, that thing grew into about four or 500 people. And that's where my investors came from. All but two of them came out of that group. You know, they got to know, like, and trust me. I got to know, like, and trust them, right? As a passive investor, you got to understand this is a two-way street. This is a dating situation, basically. You know, I got to make sure you know, like, and trust me. And I got to know, like, and trust you. If I like you, but I don't think you like me, I'm not going to let you in because it's going to be a tough, a, a tough, uh, arrangement because we're going to be in business together for three to five to seven, maybe 10 years. So we got to make sure we know, like, and trust each other. But that's where it all came from. I had no experience. I had no job at that time. You know, I had kind of sort of retired, but these people got to know me well enough that two of them even agreed to sign on my loan first time out knowing I had no experience. So it's about connection. It's about networking. And uh, like I said, I started my own meetup and that's how my first one went. You said, so then I did a uh, recently, well, about three years ago, two and a half to three years ago, I did a two property portfolio. We bought 484 units across two properties, had to raise $12 million. So it got a little more difficult, right? Instead of raising 575 and uh, doing it for 14 people, we have 99 investors in that deal and we raised almost $12 million. So the big thing there is we've implemented, you know, lots of virtual stuff. We are now cloud-based completely. We have a fully built out portal that we uh, bought or we subscribe to, I guess you'd say it. So we use invest next. It's expensive, but it's well worth it at scale. It's 1500 bucks a month, but it's got everything in one spot. They can subscribe to the offering there. They get their updates there. They get their tax forms there. It's all in one little ecosystem. But then I also have an outside CRM for just regular everyday communications with people. I use it for marketing, to be honest. You know, I use Active Campaign. Uh, we lose, use a lot of Google Docs. So most of our stuff has gone online now and a lot of cloud-based stuff. So it has changed. It's gotten easier because we now have corporate staff to help us with investor relations and operations. So we have a full back office built out now too. So with scale, it gets much easier. I love the fact that you brought up uh, your investor portal and I'm going to ask you this question. I've already answered this on the show before and I, I love to hear your, your opinion on it. Why pay for a, another piece of software, like you said, subscription for your investors instead of keep going email with the well, offerings? It, well, it legitimizes you. It makes you feel more polished and professional. So you start dealing with some of the bigger investors out there, you know, some, some whales, you know, if you're going to deal with family offices, especially um, insurance company, you need to step up your game. You need to look a little more professional. Um, but it also provides value to them. Again, they don't have to worry that I miss an email. You know, did I not do this the right way? You know, did I get my wire done the right way? Everything's in one concise spot for them. It's so much easier. They can go and attract their investment. They could track multiple investments with us if, you know, because many people have invested in more than one deal with us. So it was ease of use. It was simplicity for them. And then selfishly for me and my business, it helps us to get bigger, to scale. I was going to build my own. I'm a big believer in, I don't want to be at anybody else's mercy. Google, Facebook, Instagram, all these different people can change their terms of use. It could completely flip my business on its head because they changed something on me. So I don't like being captive to somebody. But then I thought, okay, what am I best at? It's not building software. It's making connections, finding deals, raising money, making people money. It's not this stuff. So I just let it go and reached out to the best from a cost perspective person I could find to help us with that. Absolutely. We had Kevin from Invest Next on and he, he was explaining the details about the benefits of using it for the actual LPs, the passive investors, and for the operators. So thank you for, for sharing a little bit of your reason why you went into that. Right. So, Brooks, what did Little Partners benefit from investing in your opportunities? What, what is the reason why people are investing in multifamily per se and then in you? So in multifamily, because they got here because they realized either what they're doing is not working at a 401k IRA situation or They've invested, but maybe bought a couple of single family rent homes, realized, man, that's a lot of work and there's, there's no scalability there for the most part. So it, it's just more headache than I want. So multifamily is easier to scale. It's easier to deploy your capital with a syndicator. Um, it's safer. If I have five vacancies on a 200 unit property, that's nothing. 
if I have vac- five vacancies and 10 single family rent homes, I'm in a lot of trouble, right? So it's just, it's easier. The payoff is a lot bigger in multifamily. Single family, you'll probably make more cash flow, true dollars, you know, well, like cash on cash return. Your cash on cash return will be higher than mine. But I have all kinds of ways to pull capital out of the deal. When I sell the deal, if I make it more profitable, then I'm going to get a lot more money on the back end than you will selling a house because I'm selling a business, not a personal residence. So that's what's in it for them. What was the second part of the question? What's in it for me? And no, it was just for the, the benefits of the passive investor. That's, that's oh, all. Oh, that's right. And then what, why me? Well, yeah, yeah, why everybody's you? chasing yield. Everybody's trying to find real estate deals that get them the best return. But we're all doing the same thing. We're all you know, buying, rehabbing, renting, and trying to deliver profit to our investors. So why would you come to us? Well, you know, I, I firmly believe it's because of who we are. Um, and I'm sure everybody says that and, you know, but we try to do the right thing all the time, try to do things the right way. I, I was on a podcast yesterday and I was telling the guy that, look, I live my company's life at, with the word empathy. I want to know that what we're doing is the right thing. It's not chasing a dollar. You might be able to make an extra half point investing with somebody else. Fine. That's okay. I'm probably going to pay my staff more than most. I'm going to give my staff benefits and perks that most people won't do. And we're going to take care of the residents maybe at a higher cost than other syndicators will. We spend a lot of money on community engagement, trying to make people feel like they live in a, in a home, not an apartment complex. Um, and again, we just try to do things the right way. And we're going to leave a few dollars on the table. And I'm more than okay with that because I realize what I try to beat into my staff's head all the time. When we have a resident, this is not their business. It's a business to us, but to them, this is where they raise their family. This is where they cook Thanksgiving dinner, right? So take care of them. Make them feel special, wanted. There are some that will try to take advantage of us, and that's okay. But we're not going to turn our back on doing the right thing for people. So I think it's our approach to investing. We're super, super communicative. We talk to people all the time. We tell you the bad stuff when it happens. Not everybody wants to do that. And that's part of why I wrote the book. I want you to understand, you need to tell people when things hit the fan. Because you want to hit the fan as a syndicator. And if you can't get out in front of it and tell people and be transparent and honest with them, they're left to their own devices and they're going to go really dark places if you don't communicate. So very long-winded answer, I realize. But, you know, that's kind of what it is. Just very open, very communicative, and we do things the right way. No, it's the perfect answer. I love your commitment to community with your staff and with your, with your assets too. Like you said, it's people are raising their families there. So walk us through why you decided to write the book. What's the book entailing? So, all right, like you said, it's called syndicating is a and other truths you haven't been told. So I've worked in this industry now for eight years, nine years, if you include my education. So I've been doing it for a while. And what I started seeing over and over and over and over again. And I talk about it in the book this, exactly this way. You go to a weekend seminar. You go to a free event, quote unquote free event, right? There's always an upsell. They're always trying to sell you a five to $50,000 program. So when, you, when you're in this room, they're trying to pump up the room, you know, Tony Robbins thing, elevate the energy, get everybody up on their feet, get everybody excited, show them the trillions of dollars they're going to make tomorrow when they buy your program. Cause your program is secret special. It's, it's the magic bullet. So you get sucked into this emotion and then they're going to start parading people across the stage and they're going to tell you all the success stories and how it's changed their lives by following plan X and following all the secret advice that they gave me. Well, they're not telling you all the bad stuff that's going on. They might say enough to keep themselves on the right side of the law to say, hey, because he made a 400,000% return in two days does not mean you're going to necessarily, but this is what's possible. And then they walk away from it. So they're not going to tell you about the dead bodies, the fires, the arson, the carjacking, the home invasions, the, the OFAC, a division of the government that takes $5 million of your money and doesn't tell you. They're not going to tell you that stuff because if they do, you're going to get scared. You're not going to give them their $50,000 or $5,000. So they've got a different goal out of that event. Suck you in. I think they're all good programs for the most part. They're run by good people, but they have a different objective in that room than you do. So I wanted to tell people in this book what really goes on. 
when you syndicate. And I tell them also two or three times in a book, if you read this book, you go, oh, I, I want no part of that. That's stress. That's a lot of work. Good. I'm glad. You know, it's a great way to make a living, but it's a lot harder than you're going to believe when you listen to people on a stage. So I'm just trying to pull back a curtain. That's all. I love the realness, the authentic, authenticity of it. And I, I can't wait to dive into it. So I'm, I'm super excited. You just recently released it. And um, I want to ask you another thing about systems outside of the investor portal. What's another thing you had to implement that benefits or helps you scale or do anything regarding your passive investors? Well, that's the thing. We had to systematize. So it, 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 at the end of the line, it helps the investor because we run a more profitable endeavor. But what we did, you know, we, we legitimized everything again. We, we created a company handbook, an employee handbook. We laid out everybody's job. We gave them the manual. When you take, when you take a position with us as a leasing professional, this is your job and a handbook, right? We don't just throw that at you and say, go sit in a corner and learn it and then come back in three hours and now you're ready to go. Of course, we're there to support them, but they always have a reference manual to go back to. So that was one of the biggest things that we did. Our first two properties didn't have it, right? About a 48 and 120 unit property. We were small enough. Our uh, staff, they weren't asking for any of that stuff. So on the third one, we bought from a more professional company and uh, the staff was expecting a little higher uh, standard from us. So we had to kind of step up our game. But again, it's just made us better. Everybody's on the same page this way. We've got a complete set of, you know, SOP, standard operating procedures. But I tell them, again, it always goes back to the same thing for me. Follow what the book says until you can't follow what the book says. And they're like, well, what the hell does that mean? Well, if it's not the right thing to do for a human being, don't do it, right? It's a policy. But a policy is only there until it can't be followed. If you always do the right thing by our residents, just like we'll always do the right thing by you as our staff, explain why you didn't do what the book said. And as long as you have a legitimate reason and nobody got hurt, that's fine. We want you to do that. So, you know, that, that's it. And then other than that, it's, it's letting go. You know, you got to hire smart people, people that are better at their job than you are, or you wouldn't have hired them. Give them the tools, hold them accountable, but get out of their way. Let them do their job. That, that's probably been the biggest thing. I love it. I love it. I love it. So Bruce, a couple things. One, what's one piece of advice you can give to the PI listeners? To the, uh, to the who listeners? The oh, PI okay. listeners. Oh, okay. So the biggest piece of advice, you got to get out. You got to do your due diligence. You got to talk to people. You know, I'm writing a course right now, to be frank, about how to vet your sponsor um, because everybody's always asking that. And one of the big things that I see on different message boards is, you know, ask them for referrals. Don't do that. Why would you do that? You know, let's say I'm, you know, the sponsor you're thinking about investing with and I have 100 investors, 97 of them hate my guts, but three of them are family members. Who do you think you're going to talk to? You're not going to talk to the 97 people that hate me. Now, most sponsors are very honest. They're very transparent. And that wouldn't happen, but it could. So you got to get out. You got to network. Go to all these different events nationally as soon as that opens back up. Join all the Facebook groups you can. Go to all the meetups you can and just start poking around. Hey, have you ever invested with Bruce? Yes, I have. Well, how was it? Guy's a jerk. I hate everything. Well, then you probably don't want to invest with him. But I would still ask two more people. Because maybe there was some personality conflict and the person telling you this was unreasonable. Who knows? So just ask around. Um, if you get good reviews from people unsolicited, um, it's probably a good place to start. You do a Google search, um, see if they come up as a cat rapist. You know, if they've raped a cat, you probably don't want to invest with them. You know, just do some basic stuff. I, I know that's kind of funny, but it's just to make a point. Don't fall in love with anybody. Don't look at the, their sparkling blue eyes and go, oh, I love them. I'll give them all my, I've had people walk up to me after an event. I get off stage. They, I had one guy walk up with a $100,000 check in his hand. I'm ready to go. What the hell's wrong with you? I said, no, I'm not going to take your money. And other syndicators are like, what are you doing? Like, I want no part of that, dude. That's reckless. And that's going to be a disaster of a relationship. So just think about what you're doing. I love it. I always say this, just like they vet the sponsors, the sponsors vet 
the investor. I love it. Thank you for that. Bruce, how can we stay in touch with you? The best way really is apt-guy.com, my website. Um, as we get the education piece up and running, uh, it'll pop up there, but you'll have like an insight into my book. I give you some, you know, some behind the scenes things, you know, this is what it's about. You can get the book there if you want, if you want to invest with us, if you want to just follow what we're doing. Um, that's the best thing. And then social would be LinkedIn and Instagram. Try it. I'm not great at social media, but I'm trying. Uh, but that's probably the best way to follow what we're doing on a daily basis. I love it. Final question. And it's my favorite question. What is the meaning behind your company name or basically how did you get the apartment guy name? So the company name um, is really Blue Bonnet, right? That's the name of our companies, but the, I guess you call it the mascot, right? The public face, because let's be honest, you know, I'm not going to hide from what it is I do. I raise money for a living. I can make a lot of people a lot of money, but if I can't raise any money, I can't make anybody any money, right? So I'm in the job of producing returns and raising money. So I thought, okay, I was sitting out in front of my meetup one night and I got there before everybody else. So I thought I had uh, sitting in my car and thought, you know, I wonder, I've never had vanity plates and I, I, I cringe at the thought of vanity plates. It felt like a douchebag move to me always. So I thought, you know, I don't want to do that, but I thought, you know what? I'm a marketer now, so I'm trying to market myself. So I just started doing some searches. Uh, I went on the uh, license plate website or whatever and typed in APT-guy and it was there. I was like, well, holy crap. It's only like 150 bucks to get the plates. I'm like, I want to feel like a douchebag, but I will get the plates. And then I thought, well, let's see if uh, the website is available. The website was available. There's iterations of it, but there was nobody with APT-guy. I thought, so I thought, you know what? This will be my brand. So I created a, uh, a caricature of my face. Um, so I've gone all in on the brand. That's what it is. You know, it's my calling card. I had one guy, you know, light me up direct, indirectly at an event. He was talking to my daughter, actually. He said, oh, this, this logo is stupid. This is juvenile. You can't do this. I'm like, tell him to come talk to me. If, he, if he'll come talk to me, I'll talk to him about it. Like, look, you don't know anything about me. You don't know who I'm pitching. If I'm pitching to family offices, valid point, right? Because if I present myself as a caricature, okay, that's not going to be taken seriously. I, and I agree. That is not my target audience. I'm raising money $100,000 at a time from working people, from family people. And my logo, my caricature is memorable. So they go, oh yeah, that's the dude that looks like a car cartoon character. It works for me, so... Yeah, that's, again, long story, but that's kind of how the whole apartment guy came to be. I love it. I love it. It's, um, it's exactly what was going through my head when we met at uh, the conference last year. So I remember that we, we, we connected there. It was awesome. I appreciate you. Bruce, thank you for coming on. I appreciate you. We got to have you back on when you release the course. I want to hear about it. And everybody, go get the book. Syndicated. It's a great book. You know, I wrote it, but I wrote it with a ghostwriter, so I'm not going to claim the quality of it, but it'll help you understand if, you, if, if syndicating is right for you. Absolutely. And, and it's another, another thing for your tool belt. Find out if you really want to be able to on the active side or passive side. I appreciate exactly. you for coming on, Bruce. Absolutely, brother. Thank you for having me. We'd love to have you, man, anytime. Open invitation. PI listeners, thank you for listening. As always, we hope this was the best resource for your investment strategy, but also the best use of your time. As much as it pains us to leave you, but you know what time it is. Time to go put this into practice So the next time we meet. Happy investing. PI listeners, I'm grateful for your time and I appreciate you for listening. It would mean the world to me if you went to iTunes and left a rating and written review. Let me know how you feel about the show. It really makes a big difference with getting the podcast out there. Don't forget about our Facebook group, where all of our guests are members of. I'll be there to answer any of your questions, or even questions you might have for future guests. Subscribe so you can get the latest episodes and our fan favorite quick hitters. Finally, I want to keep you updated, so head over to johnfortes.com and sign up for the newsletter. If you're interested in partnering with me, sign up on the contact page so you can talk to me directly. I look forward to connecting with you. Happy investing.